How's it going again, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donnie here taking a look at 21.1 stuff, radioactivity and nuclear equations. So our, our objectives are to explain the different types of nuclear reactions and to complete nuclear equations for these nuclear reactions. So, quick review. The nucleus contains the protons and the neutrons, right? So if I'm looking at my diagram over here, I put P for protons, I got three, N for neutrons, I got four. This is going to be lithium-7 isotope. Right, it's got three electrons. Uh, the electrons are found on the outside of the nucleus. And yeah, that should be kind of a review. So what are nuclear reactions? Well, so far, all of our chemistry has dealt with the outside of atoms, the electrons, and specifically the valence electrons. So electrons are either being shared or lost. Um, and you have electrons being transferred. And that's all of our chemical reactions that we've been looking at. But now we're going to look at something different. All right, we're going to talk about changes in the nucleus itself, changes in the protons and the neutrons of the atom. So we're going to talk about alpha decay, beta emission, positron emission, and gamma radiation, as well as uh, electron capture. So here's an example. We got some uranium-235, and you can see the nucleus, which is this thing, is freaking out. It's unstable. It wants to get rid of some stuff because it's too big. So what happens is, during nuclear reactions, we have a change in the number of protons and neutrons. So, boom, some of them go away. So if I take a look at this, um, it's no longer uranium-235, right? Because the protons, which are the blue spheres, I lost two of them. And the neutrons, which are the red spheres, I lost two of them as well. So basically what happened is I had uranium-235. Remember, the mass goes up top. And I look up uranium has an atomic number of 92. So I know I had 92 protons, and I had a total mass of 235, which tells me that I had 143 neutrons, right? Because the protons each have a mass of 1, and the neutrons each have a mass of 1 as well. So if I have a total mass of 235, well, it's all right. 235 came from 92 protons, and what's left? 143, if I did math right, neutrons. So that's how I got that, okay? So now, well, what's my new thing? All right, well, the uranium-235 lost two protons, so a charge of two, and a total mass of four. This is an alpha particle. It's also a helium nucleus. So this is an alpha particle, or you can also write it as HE because it's the same thing as the nucleus of a helium atom. All right, well, then what is my new thing? Well, you look at the charges. I had 92 protons. I got rid of two of them, so that tells me that I have 90 left in my nucleus. And I just look up what has an atomic number of 90. Thorium, TH. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the mass. I had a mass of 235. I lost four of it, and that's going to tell me I have a mass of 231 left. So basically what we're doing is we're making sure that the mass on each side and the charge on each side equals out. So we have to check the mass up top. So 235 has to equal 4 and some number. And on the bottom, the charge, same deal. 92 has to equal 2 and some number. And that's how we're figuring out what this new thing is. All right? Um, yeah. So that's alpha decay. That's something that uranium-235 will do. All right, so now we got a new example, carbon-14. Carbon-14 has an unstable nucleus as well, and it's bugging out, as you can see, and then it's going to emit a particle. Pew! Right, and if I, you know, slow it down, you can see that what it gave off was a beta particle. So I have a beta particle, which is the same thing as an electron. Now, what's interesting is if you take a look at what happened to this nucleon, it started as a neutron, and then it gave off a beta particle, and now it's a proton. So what's actually happening is we have a neutron that has a mass of 1, and a charge of 0, and it's giving off a beta particle, which has a charge of negative 1, and no mass. Essentially no mass. It actually has a mass. Uh, but it's so small we say it's nothing. So then we go, all right, well, what does the missing thing have to be? Well, 1 has to equal 0 and some number, right? So I know that's going to have to be a 1. And 0 has to equal negative 1 and some number. So it's going to have to be 1, which tells me that my neutron just became a proton by giving off a beta particle. 
so that's what's happening. So what's that mean for carbon-14? Well, carbon has a charge of 6, and carbon-14 has a mass of 14, and it gave off a beta particle, which has a charge of minus 1 and a mass of 0. So what is the missing thing? Well, 6 has to equal negative 1 and 7. I look up what element has an atomic number 7, nitrogen, and then 14 has to equal 0 in some number, so that's going to be 14. And that is my decay equation for carbon-14. All right? Cool. New example, calcium-37, also an unstable nucleus. What's going to happen? Pew! Well, let's take a, a close look. What changed was right here. This proton gives off a positron pew, and becomes a neutron, which is crazy, right? What's going on there? Uh, well, we had a proton, charge of 1, mass of 1, and then it gave off a positron, which has a charge of 1 uh, and no mass. Uh, so what is the new thing? Well, 1 has to equal 0 in some number, so that's going to be 1. And 1 has to equal 1 in some number, so that's going to have to be a charge of 0. What is that? A neutron. So basically a proton becomes a neutron when we have positron emission. And what's really cool is positron is antimatter. And it's pretty cool because when it runs into matter, it annihilates and just turns into energy, which that's like a whole nother video, but it's pretty cool. So what's that mean for calcium-37? Well, calcium has an atomic number of 20, so it has 20 protons or a charge of 20, and it said its mass was 37, right? That's what this means, and it gave off a positron. So I know it gave off something with a charge of plus 1 and a mass of 0. So what are my missing numbers? Well, 37 has to equal 0 and 37, and 20 has to equal 1 and 19. So now I look up what has an atomic number of 19? Potassium, and that is my nuclear decay equation. Not so bad. All right, radium-226. Bugging out, bugging out, bugging out. It's unstable. Pew! It gives off a gamma ray, right? So this gamma ray has no charge, and it has no mass. Because it's not matter, it's energy. It's like a photon. It's giving off a high-energy photon. So what does that mean for radium? It means that it's still radium. I'm going to even write it out. I got radium-226, and... I don't know radian's atomic number offhand because I'm a bad person, but it's 88. And then it gives off a gamma particle, which I can't draw fancy apparently, which is going to look like a cool looking Y, has a, a mass of zero, charge of zero. So what's the missing thing? What's the new thing? Well, nothing. It's not a new thing at all. It's still radium-226. All right, it just gave off a bunch of energy. All right, and the last one, which may be new to you guys, we got rubidium-81. And we have an electron orbiting the nucleus. And we have an unstable nucleus. And what's going to happen is that electron is going to get captured by the nucleus. So we have an electron going in, and it's going to be uh, absorbed essentially by the nucleus. And it's going to change one of those protons into a neutron. Because basically what we have going on here is we have a proton capturing an electron well, then what's my new thing? Well, 1 and minus 1 has to equal 0, and 1 and 0 has to equal 1. That's a neutron. So here we have a proton becoming a neutron. So what's that mean for rubidium-81? Well, Rb-81 is the mass, and I look up Rb's atomic number, which, again, I'm a bad person, and I don't have that memorized, uh, and I can't even find it. So I'm a really, really bad person. There it is. It's 37. And it's capturing an electron, so minus 1 for the charge, 0 for the mass. And what's my new thing? Well, 81 and 0 has to equal 81, and 37 and minus 1 has to equal 36. So what is my new element? Krypton. Boom. So that is electron capture. Um, yeah, cool. So properties. We have uh, the, the different properties going across the top over here, and we have the different types of radioactive emissions uh, and some info. So, an alpha particle has a mass of 4, a charge of 2. That's why you see it looking like this or like that. Uh, its penetrating power, relatively speaking, would be like 1. It's not very uh, powerful. It won't travel far. In air, it'll maybe travel a couple inches, and then it's going to get stopped because it's big, it's massive, it's got a lot of mass, so it's heavy. It's going to run into things, and it's going to stop. So it's the same thing as a helium nucleus. All right, beta particles 
have a mass of almost zero. It's not actually zero. It's this. It's one over 1,822. So you would need almost 2,000 of them to equal the mass of just one proton. So we say it's almost zero. Its charge is going to be negative one, and its penetrating power, relatively speaking, is 100. So because it's less massive and it can, you know, travel further without uh, interference. And other notes is it's basically an electron. It's an electron coming out of the nucleus. All right, and gamma, we have a mass of actually zero. It is zero. We have a charge of zero, and its penetrating power is like 10,000. So it's a lot more uh, penetrating than alpha or beta particles. Uh, it's basically just a high-energy photon. And then we have positron emission, uh, where a positron is a lot like an electron. It's an anti-electron, essentially. So it has the same mass. Uh, it has the opposite charge, though. So its charge is positive one, and its penetrating power is like relatively non-existent because as soon as this antimatter comes into contact with matter, it annihilates and it's got. So it's not going to pierce through anything really. Um, yeah. So examples of completing nuclear equations. If I haven't given you enough examples already. All right. So we have Hg two hundred one charge of eighty. Right now we have it absorbing a positron. All you got to do with this stuff is go, hey, does the top equal on both sides? Does the bottom equal on both sides? So I look at the mass, which is the top. 201 and 0 has to equal 201. And then 80 and 1 has to equal 81. So now I just look up. Well, what's that element with atomic number 81? And it is TI. Anyway, um, yeah, so then we do the same thing. I got iodine 131. So you got to make sure that the top equals the top on both sides, the bottom equals the bottom on both sides, and not scribble all over everything. So 131 has to equal some number and zero. So I know that's going to be 131. Now 53 has to equal one and some number. That's going to be 52. So I'm going to look up what has an atomic number of 52, TE. And that's all you got to do for these nuclear decay equations. All right. So to summarize, properties and notations of decay particles. You need to know the properties of those decay particles uh, and how to draw their notations. You know, is it HE? Are you, are you doing this to notate it? Are you doing this? You know, or what are you doing? All right. So you need to also be able to determine missing reactants or products from the decay equations, which is literally what I've been showing you this whole time. All right. You need to balance the masses and balance the charges individually. And that's pretty much it. All right. So I hope you found it helpful. I'll see you in class. Bring questions. Goodbye. Okay,